the people that really get screwed, as Jason said, are the common shareholders, because eventually those convert deals that do get done, those people will end up owning the company. The cap yep. table gets completely flushed and reset, and the employees get wiped up. And, and on top of that, you have to factor in these much higher rates. And so these building owners, if they financed it, which they invariably have always financed, they have huge variable rate payments that are due on these buildings. The rent rolls are lower. Even people like Twitter is just refusing to pay the rent. As we look back on 2022, it's clear that it was a year of significant challenges for startups, especially those in tech and cryptocurrencies, with a number of high-profile bankruptcies. As we move into 2023, it's important to be aware that the economic landscape may continue to be challenging for these young companies. Chamath Paliapatiya will be providing expert insights and analysis to help you to understand the implications for your business or investments. Join us as we navigate this ever-changing landscape together. If you've not subscribed, do so now and start enjoying our quality analysis. At the end of Q4, I did five deals, and four were pro ratas, one was a new deal. And they were all clean markups. So the four deals that other people put money into. And I was looking at them and I was trying to figure out, okay, what differentiates these things? And Freebird, to your point, these were super clean startups with very clean cap tables that had clear progress. And then conversely, I had seven converts showed to me for companies whose valuations were anywhere between three and I would say 12 billion. And I did none of them. And not only did I do none of them, nobody else did any of them. And the problem was the real market clearing price was 80 to 90% down. And so I was like, what is going on here? So Freebird, to your point, I don't even think it's just cash intensive startups. I think it's like all growth companies are in a really bad place. I thought that this growth stuff would get sorted out in two to three months. And now I'm worried it's two to three years. Who does the convert benefit? The convert benefits the VCs who want to maintain the illusory valuation that they had before they they're, do they're that work on the to, book, yep. they do that to assuage the limited partner who gave the money that the marks aren't as bad as they thought but the people that really get screwed as jason said are the common shareholders because eventually those convert deals that do get done those people will end up owning the company the cap yep. table gets completely flushed and reset and the employees get wiped up as a business expert, Chamath is aware of the risks that young businesses face. It's important to acknowledge the sobering reality that the failure rate for startups is alarmingly high. According to recent reports, 9 out of 10 startups fail, and in some studies, the number is as high as 11 out of 12. Additionally, 7.5 out of 10 venture-backed startups also fail. These statistics are particularly relevant as we move into 2023 and as the economic landscape may continue to be challenging for these young companies. By understanding the reasons behind these high failure rates, it's possible to make more informed decisions and potentially increase the likelihood of success. The past two years have been an unprecedented period for the startup industry, with many companies experiencing significant growth, while others struggled to survive amid economic uncertainty and global disruptions. Special Purpose Acquisition Companies, or SPACs, are companies created specifically to raise funds through an initial public offering, or IPO, in order to acquire one or more operating companies. The idea behind an SPAC is that it allows a private company to go public more quickly and easily than a traditional IPO. Recent data from Crunchbase shows that venture capital funding dropped significantly in quarter 3, with a 33% decrease from the previous quarter and a 53% decrease from the same period last year. This trend suggests that it's a difficult time for startups to raise funds, and the days of large seed rounds may be temporarily over. FTX was one of the biggest failures of 2022, and its failure surprisingly involved a lot of venture capital firms such as Sequoia. Are these VCs overvaluing these startups and misleading the public? Chamath Paliapatiya thinks so. It seems we cannot trust SPACs and these firms that value the startups the public is investing into. FTX's collapse serves as a reminder for venture capitalists to just use common sense. Sequoia Capital reportedly marked down its FTX stake to zero after investing over $210 million in the exchange. 
Crypto venture investment cooled significantly in 2022. Crunchbase data shows $12.8 billion invested in crypto startups compared to $23.3 billion in 2021. I think that the biggest potential business loser this year is Google Search Ooh, as measured by stunning. pure profitability and engagement. I think it's easier for me to see where the the usage comes from as opposed to picking OpenAI or ChatGPT in terms of where the usage goes to. And the reason is because I think a lot of people don't still fully understand how machine learning and AI work, but just 30 second primer. There's two big buckets of work. There's what's called learning, which is how you learn how to make predictions. And then there's what's called inference, which is when you actually type something into the search box, you get the answer. The thing with learning and what ChatGPT is showing is that they have learned by crawling the entirety of the web. There are five or six other organizations that are capable of crawling the entire web in terms of cost, in terms of compute, in terms of the quality of the transformers and the quality of the AI. And so I find it easier to predict the decay in the quality of Google search as that much better than everybody else than I find it is to predict who will win because I think that with enough time and money, Oracle, Microsoft, Google, the Chinese internet companies can all compete, Facebook. And so I think that you'll converge on the same training, which will lead to the same inference. And so I think consumers end up getting confused and will end up being able to get high quality search results from many places versus today, you know, you would only think that Google is the only game in town, quite honestly, for most people. Well, so I think that the statistics if, you know, show that yeah. Google lo could lose 10 or 15% of usage to all these other sites. And that may not make any of those sites that relevant, but it'll have a material measurable impact to Google. Faced with the possibility of an economic downturn, Google announces hiring slowdown and the closure of its Stadia gaming service in early 2022. Despite a 65% surge in stock in 2021, Google's shares saw a 39% drop in 2022. Reflecting the uncertain market conditions, the S&P 500 index also declined by 19% in the same period. This move by Google is a sign of the company's cautious approach to navigate the challenging economic conditions. But it gets even worse. New innovations are a big threat to major companies like Google. Google's cautious approach to advanced AI models may impact its user engagement and profitability, as reported by the New York Times. The company's decision to direct its research, trust, and safety teams to focus on new concepts and products ahead of a May 2023 conference is in response to concerns about the spread of false or harmful information. Now, while Google's cautious approach may protect users, it may also put the company at a competitive disadvantage. As the field of AI continues to advance, it's worth noting that this may have an impact on Google's future. The important thing to note here is the fact that big tech companies may need to change how they work to survive in 2023. Blackstone has a product called BREIT. It's like a $70 billion exchange traded fund effectively. And what it is, is the ability for individual investors to own access to Blackstone's, you know, commercial real estate portfolio. And they had such a massive amount of redemptions that they had to close redemptions at the end of Q4. And they were worried that the redemptions were going to continue to go up. These are individual investors who basically sees the writing on the wall, as David said, and wants their money out. And so they went to the University of California pension system, and they essentially got a huge infusion of capital. I think it was about $4 billion, where they guaranteed 11.5% interest to these guys for the $4 billion. And they also posted a billion dollars of their own equity in, in the actual REIT to backstop it. So what does it show you? I think what Sachs is saying is really right. It's it may not just be in San Francisco, but you know, with all of these people either getting laid off, with all of these people now working remotely, we may finally start to see the beginning of the reckoning in commercial real estate, which has been an unbelievably performant asset class up until right about now. And and on top of that, you have to factor in these much higher rates and so these building owners, if they financed it, which they invariably have always financed, they have huge variable rate payments that are due on these buildings. The rent rolls are lower. Even people like Twitter is just refusing to pay the rent. 
So you have to take them to court. So it, it elongates when they have to pay. And so you could miss a bunch of rent payments and all of a sudden the banks could just go crazy and take ownership of these things. Blackstone Real Estate Income Trust, or BRIGHT, is a non-traded real estate right, and it suffered a tumultuous 2022. It fortunately received funding of $4 billion from the University of California. There is a lesson here though. Real estates may be showing signs of weakening. Chamath points out that a lot of big companies are beginning to owe rent. Even Twitter is having this problem. The message is clear. 2023 is going to be tough, and caution has to be taken when investing both in startups and big companies. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more.